love the skin you're in. It's something we've all heard for a long time, but not long ago, adult skincare was not something prioritized. Two doctors from Stanford, Katie Roden and Kathy Fields, saw this problem and acted on it. Now you have products all over that help clean and exfoliate, but behind this well-meaning revolution lies a dark secret, a business model that exploits their consultants and a dangerous chemical that could leave you blind. Hello, and welcome to Multilevel Mondays. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to have a brief discussion about Roden and Fields, a popular skincare company that started in the early 2000s. They have a lot of products like acne remover, wrinkle remover, eyelash products, and more. Roden and Fields also recently settled a major lawsuit, so I wanted to talk about it here. Consider this an enhanced covering of this popular company. Just as a heads up, there will be a number of times where I call the founders by their first names, and this is just going to help distinguish the individuals from their business derived from their last names. So with that being said, let's jump right in. Katie Roden and Kathy Fields met in 1984 as dermatology residents at the University of Stanford, which right away demands some context. In 1970, only 6% of dermatologists were women. In 2017, that completely changed. I assume that their presence in the industry was groundbreaking in terms of representation. The two ladies bonded during their time at Stanford and remained friends as they began their careers. I think it's interesting to note a level of charisma Kathy expresses when talking about the school experience with Katie. This comes from a 2017 interview with the Jewish exponent. We were kind of two of a kind. The rest of the group was pretty nerdy, she laughed. I was Miami Hot Pink and she was Rhinestone Roden from LA and we hit it off. Miami Hot Pink and Rhinestone are performative nicknames if you ask me. It's interesting that she labels the rest of the group as nerdy. I'm not going to assume that they look down on their colleagues, but if these women were considered charismatic and influential in their industry, I imagine they utilize their public image as a future asset. One of the many topics they discussed was the collective surprise of how many patients they were seeing. In their book, Unblemished, they attribute the lack of patients in their care to overall perception of skincare as a medical issue. Acne was considered inconsequential, a small pebble in the Grand Canyon by their instructors. It's hard to believe there was a time when skincare wasn't highly advertised, but it just shows how much the industry has impacted the public. As a minority in the dermatology field, the women recall largely female patients. While their medical field trivialized acne, their clients did not, and those clients appreciated Katie and Kathy's empathy. In 1990, they wrote a contract declaring themselves 50-50 partners in a new business venture, as much of a sign of their friendship as a shared vision. In 1989, Katie Roden expressed frustration regarding the marketing direction for skincare. Statistics behind acne in adults did not add up to what they felt was observable evidence. They were getting far too many acne clients to believe it was a problem plaguing a minority. Let's clarify that many cases were considered mild to moderate and only severe instances were being covered by insurance. You see, there was a time period not long ago when acne and mild skin issues were only attributed to teenage angst and self-esteem. Part of the revolution behind Proactive is society as a whole putting more weight into self-confidence as a component of health. Katie and Kathy felt the industry was failing the majority of people actually suffering from skin conditions. The duo conducted surveys and found that most people disliked the pimple cream market that existed in the late 80s and early 90s. The complaints were commonly that the treatments available dried their skin and became uncomfortable. That combined with the low success rate led to dissatisfaction. Katie and Kathy conducted thorough research after their surveys, looking to solve the problem that plagued their patients. After testing a number of products, they made a shocking discovery. All the products on the market served to remove acne once it was already there, instead of preventing them from popping up. It would be like a dentist saying, don't brush all your teeth, just brush the tooth with the cavity, says Fields. It didn't make sense to us as dermatologists. And to their credit, they were onto something. Katie and Kathy were right. Working to resolve a problem before it arises is something admirable in the healthcare industry. I mean, we encourage people to not smoke prior to cardiovascular issues. And we try to promote reasonable sugar and salt intake to prevent diabetes. It's not like their initial goal was nefarious. Preventative methods were the path Katie and Kathy took as they developed their product. They worked a number of years with developers and marketers until 1995, they launched their flagship product, Proactive. They first offered the product to Neutrogena to sell, but they were actually turned down. In response, they were marketed by Guthy Ranker. This benefited Proactive greatly, GR being one of the world's most noteworthy infomercial platforms. I have to admit the marketing behind the name was also quite brilliant. Proactive promised in name and mission to beat the acne before it rose to prominence. The concept caught like wildfire and before long, it was being featured in infomercials and racking up sales. This isn't even taking into account the influence of celebrity endorsements. 
star power has always been a driving force behind Katie and Kathy's early product. Many celebrities have promoted Proactive, including Mandy Moore, Jessica Simpson, Puff Daddy, Justin Bieber, and more. Currently, Kendall Jenner is the spokesperson of the skin cleansing product. It proved to be a potent combination of exposure. I actually still remember the late night infomercials showing these stars with blemishes their fans may have not been aware of and touting the miraculous solution. And for those of us who were alive during the early 2000s or even earlier, you probably remember the proactive vending machines inside the malls because I most certainly remember those. Before Rodin and Fields came into existence, Guthy Ranker operated a business practice that came with strong criticism. Proactive is one of the products associated with this. Now, keep in mind that Katie and Kathy were never in control of Guthy Ranker, especially true as they sold Proactive. I'm simply noting that all brands associated with these women have been under some sort of scrutiny. GR operates what's called negative option orders. There are negative connotations attached to them, but think of these sales like subscriptions. You subscribe for the product and you only stop receiving monthly installments and billing when you end the subscription. It's not necessarily something unfamiliar to us today. Being angry about this by itself would be similar to being angry at Netflix or Hulu simply because they're subscription based. The problem comes with the details involved with negative option sales. Truth Initiative recorded a number of common complaints of GR. One of the more prominent gripes was unauthorized billing. Many customers were either being charged more than agreed upon or charged for items not ordered. More such complaints are refunds being refused as well as products never arriving and unhelpful customer service. I don't know if GR has enough issues that warrant a full episode, but Proactive being attached to them has a share of bad publicity. In 2016, the remaining assets of Proactive were actually sold to Nestle, which is weird, but that's a thing that Nestle bought apparently. But for the record, it doesn't give me any warm, fuzzy feelings just based on who Nestle is from previous episodes we've done. Now, Proactive needed to be discussed at length regarding RNF because it lays the groundwork for how they operate as well as how they make future products. The issues regarding Guthy Ranker's negative option sales were ingrained well before the power duo founded Rodin and Fields, the skincare MLM we know today. While the negative publicity from GR isn't directly related, their fingerprints are all over the controversy surrounding the company bearing their names. Being the minds behind Proactive as well as licensed dermatologists, Kathy and Katie were literally experts in the field in which their MLM developed. And it's incredible that there actually are people who operate MLMs that actually have expertise knowledge in what they claim to sell, which is incredible because this is one of the first times it's ever happened. So I can fully understand why Kathy and Katie had the trust of their consumers. If your dentist recommended a product and guaranteed that it would get rid of gum disease for life, would you at least consider their qualifications as legitimate endorsement? Because I might. The founders started Rodin and Fields company in the year 2000 and their products were sold in the department stores in 2002. The doctors infused their professional background into the marketing. Their mission in Rodin and Fields doesn't deviate much from what you'd expect them to say as dermatologists. We know skin. Stanford trained dermatologist, Dr. Katie Roden and Dr. Kathy Fields use their expertise in over 30 years in practice to formulate products that are innovative, easy to use and backed by scientific research. This company's goal isn't supposedly to make money, but to change the world by giving people their healthiest skin. A lot of MLMs, they pose as being altruistic and focused on a selfless goal when really it is about profit. So I'd like to see if this holds true. In 2003, Katie and Kathy sold the Rodin and Fields line to Estee Lauder for a price that's not disclosed. Despite no longer owning the line, Katie and Kathy kept an eye on how Estee utilized their product. Over time, they realized that Estee Lauder prioritized advertising other flagship products over their brand line. Frustration over not being adequately promoted prompted the women to explore other marketing avenues. They studied New Skin, a direct selling firm, and decided to test it by holding a Rodin and Fields party. A Los Angeles TV station covered the party and interviewed the doctors for a late night news segment on direct selling. The station was flooded with calls from people wanting to get involved. If they weren't focused on making money as they claim, why would they turn to the MLM model? It's not like direct marketing businesses make it a secret of wanting to be profitable. The party test inspired Katie and Kathy to buy back their company from Estee Lauder in August of 2007. This was one of the first companies to really change how sellers operated from a functional standpoint. In 2006, Facebook became widely available to the public instead of being only for college students. That year was also when Twitter got its start. From 2006 to 2012, Facebook went from a little over a million to a billion users, and Twitter experienced a similar exponential growth. Instead of holding in-person events, Rodin and Fields reps began using Facebook events and live streaming on other platforms. Their rebirth and launch correlated with seismic transition to social media. So I guess congratulations for being one of the first companies to take advantage of a world-changing cultural shift. 
Though they were experts in the field, part of their success is being at the right place at the right time. They even tried to use Facebook and social media as a reason that they're different from the rest, like they don't flood you with exposure as much online as they do in person. And I mean, sure, we didn't have Facebook chat back then, but showing up on your feeds and repeated tweets is not much better. Think about your newsfeed now. How many times do you get annoyed by someone regurgitating a sales pitch or some propaganda? It's just as frustrating as someone constantly texting or leaving voicemails. Rodin and Fields enjoyed years of success from the second acquisition to the late 2010s. In 2015, they expanded to Canada and Australia in 2017. They were supposed to make market in Japan in 2020, but the pandemic literally obstructed that plan. They've consistently made over $1 billion in revenue the past five years. They were rated the number one skincare brand in America from 2016 to 2020, and earned the 2020 awards for the best premium acne brand, as well as best anti-aging brand. They originally had just over 1,000 consultants in 2008, which ballooned to over 400,000 by 2018 before declining. Many people believed in the product and bought into the hyper-positive marketing. From 2000 to 2017, Rodin and Fields flew under the radar. Their slate was relatively clean, but all of that changed in 2018 as a bevy of lawsuits began. The public and many individuals experienced eye-opening changes. The heart of the controversy surrounding RNF involves a particular product, the Lash Boost, also part of the brow-defining boost regimen. If you look at the best-selling list, it is literally still at the top of the page. I'm going to go on on a limb here and say that indicates Lash Boost being one of the highest sellers of RNF. Looking at the product description, it's called the Top Lash Serum in the US, applied nightly to make your eyelashes look longer, darker, and stronger. That rank was as of 2020, which means that it retained high sales even after the lawsuit we're about to discuss. And that's kind of concerning. As CBS News covered in 2018, Rodin and Fields faced a federal class action lawsuit. It was accused of violating state consumer protection laws and the lawsuit alleges that RNF were not transparent about key ingredients and their side effects. The key ingredient in question is something called isopropyl cloprostinate. It's used to treat serious eye conditions like glaucoma. Glaucoma is a set of eye conditions that damage the optic nerve, a vital aspect of, well, seeing. Having this condition actually leads to blindness for people over the age of 60. And as you'd expect, this is a very serious omission on RNF's part. This ingredient has a set of side effects, including cornea scarring, drooping eyelids, cysts in the iris, as well as them changing color and excessive tearing. As a side effect though, they do make your eyelashes longer. Now, I do wanna stress that this is supposed to be part of a treatment for glaucoma. There are risks taken to treat a serious eye condition. And what Rodin and Fields was accused of was using a volatile medical component for cosmetic purposes. In the US, having this ingredient isn't enough to deem the practice shady, though having it in cosmetics is not allowed in Canada. According to article seven of the lawsuit, it is used in an FDA approved eyelash enhancement product Latisse to promote eyelash growth. Possible side effects associated with using it are disclosed to Latisse consumers. The difference between Latisse and RNF are twofold. First, Latisse went through the proper channels to get their product FDA approved. Rodin and Fields make their product available over the counter, meaning they haven't gone through the proper vetting. When you have ingredients like the one discussed, being FDA approved has to be an important detail. And to miss that is kind of a big deal. The second is the simplest. RNF had no list of side effects involved. And this might be common sense now, but I'm going to spell it out just in case. If a product has potential side effects associated with it, they are as a company obligated to disclose those issues. This gives the consumer the chance to decide whether the benefits are worth the risk incurred. Not having the ingredients and potential side effects listed give consumers the impression that the product is 100% safe when it's not. This isn't something you can debate or disagree with. And I mean, there's a whole hot coffee fiasco that McDonald's dealt with years ago. Even though it's common knowledge that coffee tends to be hot, McDonald's had their coffee at boiling temperatures. It would leave third degree burn marks with no warning labels on the cup of how hot this coffee actually was. In the Liebeck v. McDonald's case of 1994, the jury stated the warning on the coffee cup was insufficient and ruled in favor of Liebeck. RNF didn't give any type of warning by comparison. In 2021, RNF also received a lawsuit from their insurance program, Ironshore Specialty Insurance, subsidiary of Liberty Mutual. In addition to their customers being deceived, the insurance company didn't wanna be on the hook for the actions of their client. They accused RNF of breaking state and federal laws through its marketing and distribution of Lash Boost, meaning the insurer shouldn't have to pay for the skincare firm's legal defense or pay for claims from the class actions plaintiffs. Customers didn't get to avoid paying for the product's volatile nature. 
Consumers of Lash Boost have experienced serious side effects, including changes in iris color, eyelid drooping, itchy eyes, eyelid discoloration, thinning and loss of eyelashes, loss of eyelash hair, eye sensitivity, eye infections, and vision impairment, the filing says. And does that all sound familiar? Well, that's because all the side effects of what I just listed are associated with glaucoma treatment. The lawsuit really didn't do the offense justice. This wasn't just unfair business practices. This was medical negligence. People were hurt from what happened with the eyelash treatment. Kathy and Katie, like, didn't you take an Hippocratic oath? Like, you know, part of which says, I will apply for the benefit of the sick, all measures that are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. Of course, this isn't a case of therapeutic nihilism. Your company overtreated to achieve eyelash care, and that in itself isn't uncommon as the lawsuit itself references a number of companies that use the analog, but you decided not to inform your patients of the product's composition. And let's be fully clear about this. The eyelash boost for all of the terminology given is not just a skincare product, it is a drug. How can Kathy and Katie claim to have Hippocratic integrity after this? I don't buy it for one minute that they weren't aware of the side effects of the product. They are doctors and allegedly did a bunch of studies on it. They would be also aware that they need FDA approval in order to sell the product. Either way, it does appear that they were negligent and uninvolved with the production of their product, or they were knowingly negligent and just decided to disregard the public's health anyway. Either way, it calls into question their validity as medical professionals. If you can't trust them to sell you something safe, then why should you trust them with any medical care? After five plus years of litigation, this legal process has finally reached a resolution as of April, 2022. What it amounts to is RNF will pay out $38 million in a settlement with the plaintiffs, as well as legal fees. In exchange, the company doesn't have to admit any wrongdoing or even exchange the product. It's a normal tactic for people who have a lot of money. Here's a bag of cash, nothing to see here, go about your day. This doesn't change the fact that Kathy and Katie's company is kind of shady and they'll continue parading this drug around as an over-the-counter product. I went ahead and took a look at the eyelash boost description and you know, nothing's changed. I searched all over and I can't find any evidence of this new disclosure that supposedly should be existing there. There is a warning of essentially, don't stick the product directly in your eye, talk to your physician if you're pregnant and keep it away from kids, like those kinds of ingredient kind of warnings. But the ingredient list and disclaimer don't include the possible side effects of like literally the reason why this class action lawsuit was even brought up, which is weird. And it is seriously baffling to me that the FDA would be like, hey, this is wrong, but we're actually not gonna put any pressure on you to change what you're doing. And this might be because of the settlement terms. Maybe the settlement blocked the FDA from making the disclosures a requirement, but still, what the heck is the point of the lawsuits if literally nothing changes after them? People can still get hurt unwittingly, and that's just plain awful. This MLM will not be suffering any major legal consequences. That appears to be what the case is here. They won't be getting shut down or anything, but the impact of this legal dispute has made waves. And before we start getting into RNF's rapid decline, let's just take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. Those big wireless providers forget that families come in all shapes and sizes. And that's why Mint Mobile decided to shake up the wireless industry with their brand new modern family plan. Each line starts at just 15 bucks a month and you need only two lines to get started. So it doesn't matter how big or small your family is, you deserve to save on your wireless service. And so many of you have already heard the good news and switched to Mint Mobile as well, just like I did. And we're going on close to two years at this point now. I switched my work phone over to Mint Mobile as well as all of my employees' work phones are on Mint Mobile's plans now too. And we don't have any trouble communicating, getting what we need with each other to get work done. Like it's really incredible. And the paying is super transparent, which is very important. And the reality is if you hate your phone bill, just know that Mint Mobile offers wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month. It gives you the best rate, whether you're buying one for you or for a family member. And all plans are gonna come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And you can also use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number, or you can change all of that if you wanna switch it up. It's totally your call. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, including the Modern Family plan, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash MLM. That's mintmobile.com slash MLM. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash MLM. Now it's the summertime, it's June, we're all getting back into the swing of things and trying to kind of resume some sort of normalcy. And sometimes when our schedules are getting all full and busy, it's hard to plan dinners regularly and cooking is good for you and you should be doing it. Thankfully, HelloFresh is here to deliver farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients with seasonal recipes right to your doorstep. 
HelloFresh is super easy to work with. You can pick from over 50 different weekly options. You can skip weeks when you need to, change your delivery dates, and update your preferences all within the HelloFresh app, which I've been raving about for months about how easy this is to use. And speaking on that customization, you can now change up your favorite dishes with their new Hello Custom offerings by even swapping out a protein for another, switching out sides, upgrading to a more luxe experience. It's amazing. And that means more choices, more variety, and more meals truly tailored to you and your your needs, your family's needs, you and your friend's needs, whoever's needs. And HelloFresh's chefs really know how to diversify the menu. I wish they would put firecracker meatballs on the menu more, but I get it. They're about showing all these really amazing recipes. They've got stuff like salmon limon and pasta primavera and more firecracker meatballs, please. So if you wanna get started, make sure you go to hellofresh.com slash MLM16 and use code MLM16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, that's hellofresh.com slash MLM16 and use code MLM16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Now, when you go look at RNF's website, you'll see that they still have over 300,000 consultants selling their products but the company has actually been in a steep decline over the last several years, including before the pandemic even hit. This is also counting the 50% of consultants who make no money at all during the year. And that's not hyperbole either. I literally mean they make no money despite being a rep. So they literally only have around 150,000 consultants that actually bring in some kind of dollar amount. Forbes actually exposed the fact that the company is making significantly less money over the past five years, correlating that with lawsuits. RNF fell nearly 25% in revenue from 2017 to 2018, going from 1.6 billion to 1.3 billion. It stayed there in 2019 and then dropped to 1 billion in 2020. MLMs reported a financial renaissance during the pandemic, earning substantially high profits. So it's really telling that Roden and Fields couldn't make a profit in what they'd consider an ideal situation people were quickly waking up to the reality of Roden and Fields. Sadly, this means that Kathy and Katie's company is no longer a billionaire status company, and they're just multimillionaires now, which I know, heartbreaking, tragic, devastating. But anyway, they decided to offset some of those deficits by downsizing repeatedly. In 2019, Roden and Fields laid off 15% of their employees from their home office in an effort to simplify their home office workforce in order to best position for the future. Somehow, this was supposed to make the workplace simpler, more efficient, and promote more innovative thinking. That just makes no sense though. Innovation tends to have a greater chance when there are more perspectives to utilize. They can't even hide behind the pandemic because the layoffs occurred before the full brunt of it was even realized. Apparently there wasn't enough innovation because they laid off another 70 employees last December, which would account for another 15% of their home office workforce. I'd like to think that all of the dishonesty and number of people who've called them out has raised awareness and actually made a significant impact. It is a shame that so many people had their lives impacted by a company just because that company lied to consumers and had no regard for any regulations. It's not just the consumers who were impacted. It was the employees who depended on this company to support themselves that were also hurt. And I really think that's something we also have to keep in mind. Part of it, however, has to be from the shitty work environment that RNF apparently produces. Glassdoor provides a number of employee reviews and I have to say they're quite telling. 25 former employees listed as a detriment that leadership was dysfunctional. 14 of them called management flat out awful. And that's not a small percentage of employees. One complaint in particular stuck to me, and this is what they wrote. Leadership is incredibly focused on MLM model and consultants. They spend millions on programs and incentives for salespeople, but corporate employees have been laid off every other year and they just got rid of their best employee retention bonus that they touted to new hires for years and even called employees owners in the company when it worked in their favor. Diane Dietz has been the acting CEO of Roden and Field since 2016. So I guess you could say Kathy and Katie may not be fully at fault for the work conditions at headquarters. Regardless, it's still a representation of their vision. And like I said earlier, I have a hard time trusting them if they're willing to promote drugs that aren't FDA approved as a cosmetic. I fully believe that this is negligence and it extends into the office. I think they know how they're getting their money. So they put their energy into the MLM program and neglect the people who are actually working for them. They're reportedly indecisive and overbearing, creating inefficient work. Hell, their own employees have been lied to just as much as the reps. And speaking of their consultants, let's take a moment to talk about them. When you look at the compensation plan RNF provides on their website, the first thought that's going to jump out at you is, man, this really looks like a pyramid scheme. Now we know it isn't by technicality, but MLMs are pretty good at 
you know, kind of acting like it, but not. So they have a product and now it's technically not because it can't be, but I think you get where I'm going. Now, the website claims that you can start your journey for the low price of $75. But if you're wanting to have a chance at actually selling RNF, you have to have the product. The personal results kit is 400, the core kit is 700, and the ultimate kit is $1,000. So yeah, the low, low price of $1,000. Now, like many other MLMs, they don't disclose the price of the prove-it kits until you've already been roped into the business. And by that time, the consultant can't get out. Now, like I've said before, they had to update the earnings statement legally, so they can't really make the easy money claim anymore. So there has to be some other way they're drawing people in, some other practice that opens that door. So I took a look at their website to see what type of sales pitch they have, and of course, One of the claims promoted is life-changing skincare. And I mean, yeah, if you took the eyelash boost and discover the wonderful array of side effects, then yeah, you could call that life-changing. So I do agree. Or if you're struggling financially, you could call having to pay the equivalent of a student loan bill or rent or mortgage and never making it back. You could also say that's life-changing, but more likely than not, it will probably be a life change you don't exactly want. Instead, I wanna look at two other reasons, one being poised for growth. We already looked at the data supporting Rodin and Fields are drastically declining. Dropping over half a million dollars in revenue is nothing to scoff at, and companies that are primed for growth typically have more employees coming in than out. What growth they're poised for is whatever money customers or reps are willing to put back into their pockets. Their other claim is to give reps a support system to help them succeed. I cannot objectively look at this company and say they support consultants from a financial standpoint. Over 90% of consultants make less than minimum wage. In fact, consultants are leaving almost as quickly as the layoffs. There were over 400,000 in 2018, and that dropped to 362,000 by 2019. And the number has continued to fall in the following years into the pandemic. They also made a claim that the women who joined them were getting the same benefits as someone who is just starting their own business. Now, you know by now that most MLMs make dishonest claims to rope people in, and we've covered these bogus claims like to hell and high water. Forbes took note of some of these slides from a Rodin and Fields all in event. And one said, we wash our face, talk about it and get paid. That simple. The other one was a flat out lie. As mentioned, many people are making full-time incomes. Hang on just a moment. All right, so I'm ready to get that money now. And oh, that isn't how it works. Oh yeah, and we're gonna get those full-time incomes in just a moment. For people who revolutionized the dermatology market and created the vaunted proactive brand, RNF must be pretty amazing, right? Like, right? It, It should be that simple. Well, no. Many of their products are severely overpriced and not really different in terms of quality. I'm not going to go over this entire portion in detail, but I wanna say that there are plenty of options on the market and you can spend seven to $20 for something that RNF is charging 40 plus for. A number of these regimens are over $150 and proven to not be exceptional. Now, I want to stress that Kathy and Katie did revolutionize the skincare game, but I'm convinced that they rode the coattails of their image and reputation in order to turn a profit. There are still hundreds of similar treatments available for a fraction of the price containing similar ingredients. The market they established in the early 2000s has expanded and exploded in popularity. A number of legitimate competitors have made an impact. And honestly, the only distinguishing factor is the brand name. That has to be part of the reason why consultants don't make much money. But that wasn't something they wanted the public to know. RNF got in trouble with the FTC for giving false guarantees for income during the pandemic. It revolved around the idea that people could make a living even during the pandemic, despite the obvious social constraints following. Not only that, but the majority of consultants don't make more than a minimum wage. It's obviously not like them saying you can make easy money is just not factually accurate. The Federal Trade Commission came down hard on RNF for being deceptive towards their consumer base. And we're here obviously to tell the truth. Now, these 2020 statistics do not count the 150,000 representatives that made nothing, only the ones who made money. So just keep it in mind as we're looking at these numbers real quick. Out of these reps, 50% of those consultants averaged $146 and 73% averaged less than $4,000. And these numbers are per year, not per month. There are some outliers, sure, absolutely. Some super sellers, for sure, like absolutely. But the reality is that when you go into an MLM and specifically, obviously we're talking about this MLM, you're likely to lose a lot of money. It doesn't take a long Google search to find someone who amassed a pile of debt by joining the scheme. For those who helped cause the FTC fallout, I assume they took a page out of their company's book. 
They seem way too comfortable with lying to consumers and anyone related. Over the years, RNF has risen to the top of the skincare industry, but the truth behind Kathy and Katie's company has slowly been revealed. Hopefully soon, no one will tolerate their dishonesty and they'll either clear their reputation or get wiped away. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. Again, I appreciate your time and spending just a couple minutes here with me today to learn about RNF. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.